Previously on World of Storm Tour. We are waiting for our baggage. I think this is a good place to record the final video of World of Storm Tour. Do we want to say goodbye? Might is not here. It's the final day of Wildebeest on Tour expansion pack, day 16. We are here at Pristina International Airport uh, by this statue fountain thing here. And unfortunately our time is coming to an end, so let's go in, check in our luggage and um, then we can talk about the highlights of our tour. Matt purchasing a magnet. Breakfast, and it's now time to talk about our experience uh, on Would It Be Sun Tour, the expansion pack. What's been your highlight of Would It Be Sun Tour, the expansion pack? My highlight of Would It Be Sun Tour, the expansion pack, has probably been our day trip to Barat, which was really good. It was a beautiful uh, town, a really interesting fortress, we had a good guided tour, and a really nice lunch up in, um, sort of up in the sort of local village, we were playing other tourists, it was just really typical Albanian food and Albanian wine, it was really very enjoyable. Highlight, um, I think my highlight would have to be seeing Albania, um, as quite an unknown country, just seeing how fantastic the scenery was and how up and coming Tirana was, I think that would be my highlight. I think my city highlight was Tirana, the capital of Albania, it was just awesome, it wasn't what I expected, a nice kind of thriving city. And then specifically the highlight within that was going to Bunkart 1, an anti atomic uh, bunker. It was huge, uh, there was lots to see in there and it really helped me kind of imagine what life would have been like uh, under the communist regime. So that was really awesome. I think the highlight has been learning about Albanian history. Um, I didn't really know anything about Albania before coming on the trip. And, um, in some ways, it's, it's, its history is, is tragic, but also kind of very optimistic um, about kind of what's to come for Albania and Albanians. Uh, the day trip to Prizren, uh, a very picturesque city, lots of rocks, spinnerets. Um, we did a nice walk up to the fort at the top of the hill overlooking the city. Um, and yeah, it's just very beautiful place to explore. Uh, what has been your low light of the trip? There haven't been many. My low light? So there's not really many low lights to choose from. It's been a very successful trip. Okay, so there haven't really been many low lights of the trip. Uh, it's been a very good trip, but I think my the low light that I can think of is on the first day in shopping. I ordered this uh, thing called a Big City Burger. It was like kind of a street food uh, burger. And um, the meat wasn't particularly tasty, but it was a burger which was f basically filled with kind of musicians, sort of like tomato, lettuce, your meat, but it also had chips in it and a lot of like ketchup and mayonnaise, and it was all, all mixed together. It wasn't really, wasn't really nice, so uh, not a great start to the, the, uh, uh, the trip, but um, yeah, it got a lot better from then. I think the low night would probably, I'm kind of in two minds, yeah, it would have to be the bus trip to Belgrade which is very difficult to sleep on, it's like an 11 hour bus journey. Also it was 20 minutes late so we were a bit concerned we wouldn't even make it to Belgrade at one point but uh, uh, yeah it was difficult to sleep, it wasn't particularly comfortable so that wasn't fun but yeah at the same time it got us to where we were going. Probably um, it would have been nice to spend slightly longer in uh, Belgrade. Um, that was partly my fault anyway because I arrived later in the day than anyone else. So um, yeah, maybe at some point in the in the future, maybe I would just go back and spend some more time there. Oh, and especially the um, floating nightclubs, the uh, they were all closed. 
uh, so maybe come back in the summer and experience those. I did sprain my ankle again, which is something I have a bit of a, a bit of a habit of doing on holiday. So for a moment, I thought I was going to be incapacitated and unable to walk, and I did that in Tirana, so it was about halfway through. But fortunately, it was fine, and I managed to hobble around for the rest of the trip without too many problems. The low light would probably be when we had to walk 20 kilometres. Uh, we did do a really nice walk up in uh, North Macedonia and it was brilliant and then we were waiting for a bus according to the bus timetable but the timetable wasn't entirely accurate so we then had to walk back. It was a nice walk but it was probably a little bit long for me and my legs did feel it for a couple of days afterwards. And so we visited five countries over the two weeks. What was your favourite? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky one. Favourite country, Albania. Um, really lovely people, lots to do, quite um, diverse as well. We went out to a village, we went to Barat, stuck in the capital of uh, Tirana, so really nice, uh, nice country that, and I'd like to come back to Albania. Where did you come go from Macedonia? Which might be a bit different. So I thought Macedonia, first of all, it has a really good flag and Scott here just seemed like a very kind of eccentric capital which I liked. Some great views from the mountain above there um, and Orid as well. I had some fantastic scenes over Lake Orid with the, the monastery. So I'm going to go for Macedonia. Torn between Albania and Kosovo. Um, I think Albania shaves it um, just because it was so, so beautiful, the people were so nice. Uh, and it's, of all the countries, I think I'd like to come back to um, Kosovo and Albania, but definitely um, would like to see a lot more of the towns and historical sites of Albania, so, Albania. Probably Kosovo, I think, just for the sheer uh, uh, beauty of Brisbane, um, and everyone would be very sort of friendly and welcoming, and all very grateful of, uh, you know, Bill Clinton and Tony Blair, so yeah, it's felt very uh, nice to be here. My favourite country, so um, I think, I, I mean, I sort of mentioned it briefly, but in, in my first answer, I guess, but, but Albania, I think, was my favourite country, partly because of the surprise, I was expecting it to be a lot more drab and less interesting than it was, it was actually really nice, the people were lovely, the food was great, the sites were interesting, so I guess Albania my favourite. What has been your favourite food experience? Okay, my favourite food experience, going on the experience side, is when we hiked up at Kotor to the cheese place. We had this guy who basically insisted that we drink raki with him for free. Um, and it was amazing scenery and an amazing waiter. Uh, my favourite food uh, would have to be uh, the lunch we had in the village outside Barat. So that was really, really good, kind of fresh local ingredients and uh, we had someone ordering who actually knew what they were doing, so that was probably the best lunch we had. So, so to avoid repeating myself, I won't talk about the, the Barat meal. Instead I'll say when we went to Kotor and had a, a fish platter in a traditional restaurant, because as I said, the, the, the cuisine here is quite meat heavy, so it's quite exciting to get some, uh, some fish on the Bay of Kotor and Montenegro. That was, that, so that gets my vote. We went to a restaurant called uh, Pishvat um, in Pristina. It was Pristina, wasn't it? Yeah, um, the sort of traditional, traditional meal, a big starter that we shared uh, to begin with. We all left feeling very satisfied and full. This is hard because we've had a lot of good food. Uh, I think we've been quite lucky and that's been one of the highlights of the trip actually. If I had to pull down, pull it down to one, maybe I would say the mixed meat platter that we had on our last day in Kotor. It was a very cheap and cheerful place, um, kind of a takeaway type place but with a couple of chairs inside. But all of the meat had been marinated really nicely. There was a range of different stuff, um, with some salad and some sauces, and it, was, it wasn't it was complex, but it was just really, really tasty, so I think I'd go with that. Um, my, so I think my favourite kind of experience with food was in Kruja in Albania. Um, me and Matt went up to the fortress, um, took the bus and went on a day trip there, and we had um, 
had quite a, like a simple lunch in terms of food, but we had this wonderful view uh, behind us, uh, right up at the kind of top of the fort. You can see kind of Tirana and see out towards the sea and things like that. So uh, we were the only people in the restaurant. So I really, uh, really enjoyed that meal. It was good. What are you looking forward to most about going home? Having some time to, to sort of settle. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's great sort of moving from, from city to city, um, but uh, it's nice to it's nice to just have all your belongings sort of out and not have to like keep packing them up and moving on. So a bit of, a bit of stability. It's been quite a busy trip. There's not been an awful lot of time just to maybe have a lie in, sit around for a little bit, which is good because it meant we've packed a lot in. But I think I'm looking forward to next weekend just having quite a lazy day with, um, yeah, with a, a bit of chill time. Um, it's been 16 days on the Beast on tour, and also a sort of a 17th day if you include the travel down to Luton Airport. Uh, so it's free, I haven't been home for three weekends, it's been quite a long time, so I think I'm just looking forward to um, like some clean clothes, uh, looking forward to uh, seeing my girlfriend and catching up with like, friends and family about the trip. Um, and yeah, and, and having some kind of maybe a bit more fruit uh, in my diet, because I've not had a lot of fruit here. The been, food's been excellent, but yeah, a bit more, a bit more fruit. So I think what I'm most looking forward to is a, a great range of international cuisines to choose from. I think the food has been very good on this trip, but it's been quite meat heavy and it's, it's, in most places it's been either traditional or Italian. So I'm looking forward to a bit of a better range of uh, cuisines to choose from. Uh, probably a proper range of IPAs um, and the kind of selection of cheese, like blue cheese that we don't really have here. I mean I like the, the goats and sheep's cheese here, but I like having a greater variation. Uh, yeah, I think the food and the drink, much as I want it to hear. Uh, yeah, food and drink. Our final minutes in Kosovo is our Wizz Air flight. Looking over the hills, Pristina International Airport. Oh no, we're in the UK. Back at Luton Airport. It's grey, cold and miserable. It's grey, cold and miserable. Yeah. And our baggage claim, I like to make events eight years ago. Here's Matt Ryder by the baggage claim. Hello. Hello? <laughs> yeah, I'm here this time. Yeah, sorry about that. Filmed by the baggage plane. Yeah, and you weren't here. Yeah, I'm here now. Amy advised we're not supposed to film by the baggage plane ourselves. So we've successfully made it into now the body of the airport. We're going to take the, uh, the bus down to the train station. Running through Luton Airport Parkway, I think this is the end of the Wildebeest Sun Tour experience. Uh, I'm going to get on this train because it goes to um, St Pancras. Uh, Danny and Amy are going to take the next train. Bye bye. So, take care. Good. Matt Ryder, I want to get Matt Ryder. There's Matt Ryder. Failed, failed again. Well, if he's, on, if he's on the platform, tell him to wave. Bye. Fed. Oh dear. Very, very chaotic end to the um, <laughs> Woody Sun Tour. It's such a bad experience. Um, say, say, say bye to Matt Ryder. We're rolling, still rolling. Where's Matt Ryder? He's coming. There you go, sit down. Ryder, take care. See you. Have a good trip back. Um, so, from all of us on Board of East TV, it's goodbye for now. <laughs> bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you.